So as I said, both of these topics appear to be getting people trouble. And um, we want to want to focus on these two things today. Um, they really aren't that difficult. You have to understand functional to understand this. And that looks a little shaky now. So we can cut it from um, reiterate what function notation is all about. Uh, so let's say that yeah, x equals 5x plus 9. So y equals 5x plus 9. Now, what did we do with the table? Let me just ask if you remember. Okay, so well, let's see. A little repeat here. And you can be able to write that down as quickly as I just did for all the basic you know, the, the basic functions that we've stressed in this course so far. Because it's a foundation for everything. If you don't understand these basic functions, we're not likely to get a good understanding of pre calculus. We might learn to do some algebra and some manipulations, but they won't hang together. So we have to be able to do this. So make sure that you're really up on the basic function. I think you probably are. Make sure. Okay. Then you reverse the columns. And then we can graph the two functions. And the graph of the exponential function is familiar. And the graph of this function. Should be familiar. And this is just like this one, kind of flipped over and rotated. Okay, if I had this on paper, flip it like this, and then rotate it like this, I'd end up with this. Are there other connections? That we'll talk about. But that's what we did last time. So the idea is an inverse function switches x and y. So leave myself bring the writer for a writer here. Inverse. Switch I really do know how to spell the obvious. Some switch up to one. Now, there's some technicalities involved with that. Function has to be one to one before we can do that, and you'd read that in the assignment. And if function isn't one to one, then you have to restrict its domain to an interval where it is one to one. Now, that's a finer point. Really, we're trying to develop the mechanics here. We're not trying to learn the whole pre calculus course in here. We're trying to support the pre calculus course. Okay, so. Um, how do we get up inverse of x? Well, y equals this.
we split x and y. So what do we get? We get x equals 5y plus 9. So, Yep, yep, inverse of x. We switch x and y, we get x equals 5y plus 9 and solve for y. Well, you're going to get x minus 9 equals 5y. So the y equals x minus 9 over 5. Now, you should fill in intermediate steps here. You're going to need to subtract y 9 from both sides. So you write x minus 9 equals 5y plus 9 minus 9. And you really should write that out. You want to keep reinforcing these rules so that you don't make mistakes when things get really complicated. So we get x minus 9 equals 5y. Then what do we do? We divide both sides by 5. So we need to write x minus 9 over 5 equals 5y over 5. Make sure you understand why 5y over 5 is just y, not because you can cross things out, because of how fractions work. OK? And you know, what it means to multiply or divide by 1. OK. Uh, so you get y equals x minus 9 over 5. Again, you want to really understand details of the summary I've given you here. I've written down three steps, but there are actually you know, half a dozen steps or more. You want to know all those things. You want to write down every one of those steps. Because again, when you get something much more complicated, you want to know what those steps are. You want to know why they work. Just lay the foundation here. Okay, well, anyway, and as I said, mathematics is, in my opinion, too much taught by habit rather than by principles. There are only about a dozen things you got to know instead of 10,000 ways that they can be applied. Okay, it's like a game with 12 rules. And I'm not sure about the 12, it might be a little more than that. It could condense down to less than that. Um, but there's a limited number of rules, and then you're into the game, you learn to play it. Okay. So, anyhow, you get this. Well, this is the equation for your inverse function. There it is. Now, to prove that this is the inverse function, we have to use composition of functions. Okay. So now, The F circle F inverse function applied to X equals X. And what this means is when the F of F inverse of X should equal X. Now, we have formulas for F of X. We have, well, we have a formula for F of X and a formula for F inverse of X. What's the first thing we're going to do if we want to? Evaluate the expression f of f inverse of x. Well, let me just review a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
So just jot it down in your paper. F of seven equals what? And F of R bark equals what? Okay, so everybody did quite well here. F of seven, you know, you just replace X by seven. Okay, F of R bark. Well, you replace X by R bark. So here's your rule. If X is R bark, then you get five times R bark plus nine. Okay, now you knew that five hard barks plus nine. Uh -huh. You can at least visualize five hard barks. It's unlike trying to do the square of an hard bark. I don't know how you can do that either. Okay, so down here, tell me what's f of g of x. And if you get that, then tell me what's. L of F inverse of X. Okay, now interestingly, I see everybody knows what to do with our part. But in most cases, you weren't sure what to do with G of X because you're probably trying to think about something besides just a single thing you need to focus on. Okay, which is that you're going to do the same thing with G of X that you just did with R bar, or that you just did up here with seven. F of anything is five times that anything plus nine. If you got anything here, you're going to have to have anything here. And if what you got here is G of X, then what you got here is G of X. Okay. One thing that you, yeah, that people have a little trouble with it. Uh, but you want to make sure that you keep that in mind, okay? You're replacing X by G of X when you do this. Just because there's an X here, that's what's a little confusing. You've got an X here and all of a sudden, it seems like it's something different and it isn't, okay? So F of G of X is just five. G of X plus nine. Doesn't matter if you have a number, an R bark, or some expression with X's in it. Okay. Just because there are X's in here doesn't mean that has anything to do with the fact that you're going to substitute that expression for X. Okay. Hopefully we've got that idea down. So tell me then what's F of F inverse of X? And all I'm asking you to do is the very same thing you just did with these. Okay, now again, presentation sometimes when I think everybody sees what to do, somebody actually skipped a step here. <laughs> and you know who it was, but I'm not going to say it on screen. <laughs> and it was a good skip, but you don't want to skip steps, not when you're getting to know or something. Okay, we want to build this very carefully. Alphabet, F inverse of X, then is five, F inverse of X plus five. Now be sure you have the notation right. You know, that's a minus one there. Okay. It doesn't mean a negative exponent. It's a notation for an inverse function. Okay. So if we wrote f of x in parentheses with a minus one to the right of it, that would be an in that would be a reciprocal. That'd be one over. Oh, that'd be a negative exponent. But when it's here, it means inverse function. Okay. And review what open mass says about it because everybody had a score. Everybody that did it, which is most of the people in Rome, had a score like three or three points. Okay. Now, I haven't looked to see if you went down into the half credit to the, you know, see if you can improve your score. Uh, but you should do that because transformations, rates of change. Composite functions, three big deals, okay, that underlie almost everything. 
Okay. So you want to get it right. Okay, well, that's five times F inverse of X plus nine. Now, do we have an expression for F inverse of X? You see an expression for F inverse of X on the board anywhere? If you do, point to it. Now, from where I am, you just point at the board and pretend you're pointing at it. <laughs> and if you point over there, or over there, yeah, but if you point at the board, <laughs> you're right. But right, right there's our expression for F inverse of where in between the world is. Right here. It's real close. Took me a minute to point to it. Uh, okay, so F inverse of X is X minus nine over five. How do we find that? We found that by doing the very first step. In writing out the f of x function, understanding that we're going to switch x and y just like we did with the exponential function, and getting that equation and solving it for y, and there's our f inverse of x. Now you have to do several of these in order to kind of lock in the idea so that when you see it, when it really counts in your pre-calculus course, it won't cause you to stumble. Yeah, especially if you're gonna take pre-calculus next semester, it might be a little fuzzy, but you wanna lock it in as best you can now so that those neurons are connected and it comes back to you instead of being new again, okay? So you wanna do several problems. You wanna make sure you work these problems. Uh, and you want to make sure that you're able to work them without looking at the videos. The first time through, if you got to look at the videos, fine. Remember what I've said. You got to then go back and see if you can work them without looking at the videos or looking at the work you already did. That's when you understand it. And you try to do that as much as you possibly can. Again, we're not trying to learn, you know, master the entire pre calculus course, but we're trying to build the habits you need to do well in pre-calculus and the ideas that you're going to have to see in pre-calculus uh, much quicker than we're going through it here and then take those ideas a little further than we do. Okay, well, so back to this. You got this. Okay. Um, so we've got an expression for f of x, f inverse of x. Right there it is. What do you think you're going to do? Go ahead and write it down. Okay, now I'm saying people uh, are wanting to do too much and not really uh, focusing on doing the obvious. Uh, so right here, we have half inverse of x equals x minus nine over Okay, and here we have f inverse of x. So what can we do? We can say that this equals five, it's five f inverse of x, but f inverse of x is x minus nine over five. So we can write x minus nine over five instead of f inverse of x. It's simple substitution. So when you do a composite of two functions, if you got an f of g of x, it's going to be 5 g of x plus 9 in this case. You just substitute g of x for whatever x is in the definition of the function, which is what we did here. Just the same thing. Now, if you have a formula for g of x, then you replace g of x with its formula. I didn't give you a formula for g of x because we were just focusing on the first step. Here, Instead of g of x, we have f inverse of x. It replaces x here, so it replaces x for now. So we get what f of g, f inverse of x equals 5 g inverse of x plus 5. Uh, f inverse of x, okay. Again, we're replacing x with f inverse of x. When we do that, we get a 5 f inverse of x here. Then plus 9. No magic to it, just function notation. Then, since we have a formula for f inverse of x, we replace the expression f inverse of x with what it's equal to. That formula, x minus nine over five, 
So let's know it. And then this equals put three dots there. If you want to understand, you can write this as five over five times x minus nine over one. And five over five is equal to one. And then you just add x minus nine divided by one and multiplied by one, which gives you x minus nine. So this gives you x minus nine plus nine. And of course, x minus nine plus nine is x minus nine and zero. It's just, I mean, x minus zero. Negative nine and nine is zero. So that's like x plus zero. That's just x. And that's what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that f of f inverse of x equals x. Now that's a process. I give you any linear function, and you should be able to do that because it's always easy. If it's a linear function, just a multiple of x plus a number, if it's ax plus b, whatever a and b happen to be, you're going to get a y equals ax plus b. And when you switch, you're going to get something very much like this, just some multiple of y plus a number equals x. And that's easy to solve. In the pre calculus class, you're then going to have to do more complicated algebra. So the purposes of this class for right now, I'm content if you can do this for linear function, although we will talk about how you would do this with slightly more complicated functions. Because you're gonna counter that into the calculus. Okay, so for right now, we understand that process and understand what it's telling us. And also understand that y equals 5x plus 9 has a graph that looks like something like this. And y equals x minus 9 over 5. Well, that's x over 5 minus 9 fifths. <coughs> Has a graph that looks something like this. The other thing that I'll show you, and I think you can see it in the open map, is that if I graph the exponential function in its inverse. Draw a straight line representing y equals x. What you have here is just a reflection of what you have here. Okay, it's like this is a mirror, and here's what the reflection looks like. Same thing occurs over here. And let me kind of show you this for you. And show you this or this. Same thing here. But in the sense that each one of these line segments is perpendicular to the y plus x line. And this is just as far on the on this side that the orange graph is just as far. On this side of the graph of, of the y equals x line of the mirror as the point on the blue line. So that's what we mean by reflections. And that's something that's kind of intuitive. You see better pictures in this book because this is, these aren't perfect pictures, okay, in your materials. And don't forget to you know, give the text a quick reading before you dive into the assignments. If you, and after you do the assignments, you really ought to then read the section to see how the assignment, how the material is presented in a coherent way. 
question. Yeah. I advise you to do all this. Okay, well, there it is. So that's the first problem. Uh, please go back and rework that section on composite functions. Once you understand it, it doesn't take all that long, okay? And if you don't understand it, it's worth the time because that's really kind of one of your foundations. Um, and it's especially important when you get into calculus. Okay. Say that x is proportional to y used to say that y equals kx. I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment, but I'll tell you what k is and we'll see what k is and we'll see how to use it. Very short, it's very simple. But we want to, our first idea is x proportional to y means y equals kx. That means if x gets bigger, then kx is going to be bigger, so y is going to be bigger. So if x gets twice as big, k times x will get twice as big, meaning y will get twice as big. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Perhaps that. We have to say that the x is inversely proportional to y. In that case, your proportionality is y equals k divided by x. Now, if x gets bigger, is k over x going to get bigger or smaller? Just show me with your thumb. If your denominator gets bigger, does the fraction get bigger or smaller? It's small. Okay. If you divide something by two, you get more than you would if you divided it by, sorry, you divide it by 10, you get less than you would if you divide it by two. Okay. Or if you divide it by two, you get more than you would if you divided it by 10, because half of something's bigger than a tenth of something, right? So we want to focus. On that idea, that should be obvious. We should understand these expressions well enough to understand how putting x in the denominator gives us smaller and smaller numbers as x gets bigger and bigger. That goes back to understanding multiplication and division rather than being able to punch it into a calculator. And I think that our system doesn't support understanding that well. To the calculator to get the right answer without understanding what it means, so you can't apply it as well. Okay, well, can't do anything about that except fix it. All right, so those are the two things you just have to have front and center. Now, it helps if you do an example. Okay, so let's say, well, here we have x is inversely proportional to y. X is inversely proportional to Y. And X, so y, let's say Y equals 12. And X equals 4. So what is Y when X equals 8? Well, on an intuitive level, if x changes from four to eight, then what have you done to x? You've doubled it, right? 
So this says here, if you double X, if you make X twice as big, then your denominator is going to be twice as big, which means that the number you get is going to be half as big. So that doubling X from four to eight is going to make Y cut in half from 12 down to six. Now that's the intuitive idea. You might understand the intuitive idea, but there's a simple process doing very simple algebra that lets us make sure that our intuition is right. And of course, if the numbers, if this was uh, 47 and this is 936, you wouldn't have that much intuition about how much X changed, okay? Yeah. Uh, so you wouldn't have that much intuition about well, why we do we need to go to the equation? So inverse proportion implies that y equals k over x. Good. Well, so we start up here. Okay, so we know that y equals k over x. Now, what else do we know? We know that y is 12 when x equals 4, right? So that means we can substitute 12 and 4 into that equation. So go ahead and do that. Substitute 12 and 4 into the equation. And then see if you can solve for y. Okay, I think everybody uh, has written it down correctly. So we take what we know the y equals 12 can actually contain. We know now the 12 equals 10 over 4. Now you probably know what you could divide by 4 to get 12, but we're going to solve it carefully because you can't always spot that. If it was 47 and 946, you wouldn't be able to just solve it by inspection, okay? So do what you would do if the numbers were nasty. Okay. So I keep emphasizing, we want to do this by the rules. And we don't want to do it by shortcuts. Right now, once you understand the rules and the shortcuts are okay, because you know that the rules apply and apply them. Okay, anyhow, in this case, what you do, you multiply both sides by four. Simple enough. Now you kind of know that those fours are going to cancel out. You want to make sure you know why the fours cancel out. Multiply fractions, just to emphasize what's going on here, you're going to multiply this. Now here, instead of four here and one here, I've got one here and four here. It doesn't make any difference. You're multiplying fractions. When you multiply K times four, well, you're gonna get the same thing you got here. When you multiply four times one, you're gonna get the same thing you get if you multiply one by four. But writing it in this form, you know that four over four is one, so we have K over one times one. Which is k times one because k divided by one is k, and k times one is k. So all that is to say that k is forty-eight. Okay. So I really recommend that you write this down like fifty times. You write this down on 50 problems and, and think about what it means. Then you understand why it's valid to cross those fours out. If you cross those fours out and don't show me that it's valid, in this course, I'm going to play. Okay. 
for your own good. Because I know that when you get to certain other problems, you're going to cross them out. Right? Okay. There are places where it just looks off, just it looks like you ought to be able to cross them out. So you cross them out, but it wasn't right. Because you couldn't do this. Okay. Make sure you know how to do this. Um, okay, anyhow, bottom line is A equals 48. So let's kind of put these steps in parentheses to indicate that. You can just go from here to here without thinking this through. You're selling yourself short and you're going to continue to make mistakes with cancellation. Okay. You're almost certainly going to continue. There's a high probability. Never seen to fail. Uh, okay, so K equals 48. Now, forget about this for the moment. What we did was we substituted for y and x and we solved for k. And it is a really easy solution. It's only one step you multiply both sides by the denominator and you simplify it. Okay. So now, we know that y is 48 over x. Okay, now part of the definition of proportionality here says y equals kx, where x, where k is a constant number, it never changes. And y equals k over x. K is, again, a constant number, it never changes. So once you figure it out, k, that's it. And you've got a formula here. So if you know x, you can find y. Okay, so now find y and x equals a. Let's substitute. Okay, substitute. X equals eight, see what you get for Y. That's how you've already done it. It's gonna give you a second to do it. I'm not even gonna look because I know you're gonna get it right. Okay. Might be one of the best, I guess you really got it right or see what to do. And maybe just put it really want to write it down. But if x equals a, we substitute that in here, and we get y equals 48 over 8, which equals 6. Now remember, if we understand intuitively, if we see that x double, and we understand that when you divide by x, if x changes from four to eight, this is going to be half of what it was. So if y was 12 when x was equal to four, it's going to have to be six when x equals eight. X doubles, y gets divided by two. All right. Now direct proportion are similar, except that when you plug your numbers in here, you're going to have to divide both sides by x in order to get k. So if it was a direct proportion and y was 12 when x was 8, you'd be doubling x. Well, if you double, you know, if you double x in this thing, you're going to get twice as much. Okay, when you multiply x by whatever k is, double x, you're going to get twice as much. Um, and it works out that way. If you plug in y equals 12, x equals 4. Divide both sides by four, you're going to get k equals three. So y would equal three x. And then if x equals eight, three times eight is 24. So x doubled from four to eight, y doubles from 12 to 24. And that's what comes out of the equation. The whole point is, though, that the equations, you substitute your known values for x and y. 
We solve for K. Plug that in to get a formula. And then use your additional information. So go ahead and do what I just said. Solve a direct proportion twice 12 and x of this form. The same x and y inflow solve the direct proportion. And okay, this is inverse proportion. Just to be sure we understand uh, the difference, I have a word for the difference. This is a direct proportion. So it's directly proportional. See what you get. Follow exactly the same process. Okay. Uh, now, as expected in this course and in pre calculus, we have an epidemic of skipping steps. <laughs> okay. We don't want to do that. We do every step because we want to think about what every step means. We don't want to skip anything. You don't want, you don't, you, you okay. In your mathematics courses, you've always pretty much had to hurry because you've been tested with a time limit and all that stuff. And there are good reasons for that. We want people to be able to think quickly. Uh, in this course, time limits, of course, you've got limits in time. You know, your life has limits in time and stuff, but you don't want to hurry through this. You don't want to skip. Now, sometimes you see intuitively what's going on and you go ahead and skip and you get it right. But then you really want to go back and do all the steps and make sure you're following all the steps, at least in your mind. Steps that you would not want to skip, though. You identify the equation. So, that's a Q there. That's an abbreviation of the equation that looks terrible. It's Y equals KX. Why? Because I say we now have the direct proportion. We have this. Uh, the given information is that y equals 12. Y equals, so 12 equals k times 4. We solve for K. And I really recommend that you write down these steps in some abbreviated form. Identify the equation, plug in the given values, solve for K. Just going to put three dots here. Because everybody got K equals three. Everybody did those three steps. I'm not sure you identified that you were doing those three steps. Strongly right about like right this, right this, and right this. Okay, then what? This is one. In a majority did not do so, I'm circling it as extremely, especially important. If you don't do this, you don't have your formula. So you plug in K. So if you get your proportionality, okay. You have to write out your proportionality, which now that you've got K, that's the goal. Now, if you know y, you can find x. If you know x, you can find y. Very easily, 
and you don't have to go back to original information because you've already incorporated that into your value of K. Now you have a formula. So if I give you 20 X values, you don't have to go through this whole stuff. Whole, whole, if, if I ask you, okay, what's Y when X equals eight and when X equals 12 and when X equals 78 and when X equals 34.6, I ask for the X values for all those numbers. You can do it. You got a formula, just plug it in, just multiply those numbers by three. Whatever X is, it says multiply by three and that tells you what Y is. It tells you that Y is always gonna be three times as big as X. So you just multiply by three. Okay, then. Uh, plug in X. And then do the arithmetic. Well, I went ahead and done the arithmetic because once you got that, you're going to do the arithmetic. Okay. Set it up as a system with six steps or seven steps. And then get used to it. It doesn't take long to get used to because it's really pretty simple. Then it's just a matter of identifying what you need to do. Now, I haven't talked about we're out, out of time, but if y is directly, if x, you know, when I wrote this down, really, we say y is directly proportional to x. I don't know why, but that is what you Okay, comes out the same either way, but this is the way we want to think about it. The other thing, okay, if, if it was y is directly proportional to x to the square of x or to x squared, then you'd have y equals kx squared. If it's inversely proportional to x squared, it's y equals k divided by x squared. If it's proportional to the square root of x, then you'd write square root of x. Or inversely proportional to square root of x, you'd write a square root of x here. And that's pretty easy. Then you get into variation where you got a couple of variables, but that's pretty easy if you have this process down. That still might cause you to stumble, but proportionality is very important. The last thing I'll say is what kind of a function is this? What's one over x? It's your basic reciprocal function, right? So you have multiple of your basic reciprocal function, just a vertical stretch of your basic reciprocal function. So we want to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, okay, I'm going to write that down for a minute over. Freedom. Go on to your next adventure. The majority of the class process. Comments. This is just a multiple of your basic reciprocal function. Vertical stretch of your basic reciprocal function. 